if I had have implemented both of these things that I talked about today five years ago, I wouldn't have had to think about them for the last five years thinking, oh, you know, is this something that we could do? I'm a bit afraid of this. At least if you implement, you can decide straight away, did it work or not? So instead of it living rent-free in your head, it's either going to work or it's not, and you can move on and make different decisions. You're listening to the Thought Leaders Business Lab, the podcast for coaches, thought leaders, and change makers who are ready to become the standout expert. If that's you, stay tuned because you're in the right place. I'm your host, Samantha Riley, and I want to help you build a successful business sharing your expertise, generate the impact and income you need to create your ideal lifestyle. It's time to make a difference and scale up. Are you ready? Let's enter the lab. Welcome to today's episode of the Thought Leaders Business Lab. I'm your co-host for today, Samantha Riley, and joined by my lovely Thursday co-host, Tim Hyde. How are you today, Tim? I am doing exceptionally well, Sam. Thank you for asking. Do you know, I managed to get that intro with that spitting over my words. You're in a great mood. We're actually recording at a different time. We're recording in the afternoon instead of first thing in the morning, and I think already it's feeling much better. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, we the uh, it's well, we do record at eight o'clock as opposed to let's say a five a.m. start. We don't do it. No, no, five a.m. I might be up at five a.m. sometimes, but it's certainly not recording podcast episodes. Well, I have a I have a, a belly full of baked beans for lunch, so I, think, <laughs> I know you were sort of chowing down on the hummus and carrots. Oh yeah. That's exactly what I had for lunch, a carrot and some hummus. <laughs> uh, sometimes the fridge is bare. I know you're off on holidays shortly, so looking forward to that. But today's episode is going to be a little bit of a reflection episode on mm-hmm. uh, on what worked and, and some of the things that didn't work for us over the last 12 months. And we thought at about time that we share a little bit more insight into some of the things that we're working on. And I think like every business, Sam, we... You know, you and I experiment with stuff as much as everybody else does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And actually, before you even go any further, I just want to talk about that experiment. I know, oh gosh, one of the very, very, like hundreds of episodes ago, I interviewed Emma Franklin Bell. And one of the things that she talked about was conducting each new idea in our business as an experiment. And it takes away the, the fear of failure. And it's just like, well, let's just experiment and see what happens. And ever since she said that to me, and it's definitely something I've taken on board, it's given me more confidence to just go, all right, well, I've got this idea. Let's just see what happens. Let's just have a play with it. Let's see what we could do with it. And it's given me more opportunities by not having that idea or looming over my head. Well, I can't do this because what if it fails? Now it's like, well, let's see what happens because I might get the data out of it to do something else that does work. So I think that when you came up with this idea for an episode, Tim, I thought it was great because, you know, as you're listening to this episode, have a listen to what we're talking about and what did work and didn't work because it really is all about experimentation. Yeah, absolutely. If I had known, (laughs) you know, put my future self hat on, if I had known how important those lessons in high school chemistry were <laughs> about, about uh, experiment methodology. I would have paid far more attention. <laughs> right? What are we going to do? What are the parameters of the test? How are we going to know whether it's a success or not? Uh-huh. Uh, and they do, they do. They do really apply to business because we are testing and measuring and continuing to try and improve our business probably each and every day. Mm, absolutely. Well, why don't we jump in, Tim? It's great to talk about what does work, but I think it's just as important to look at what doesn't work. And we're going to cover this in another episode more around the strategy of how we reflect. But I'd love you to share something that hasn't worked for you over the past 12 months. I think for me, Sam, and this is something that my team and I sort of put in place early last year and, and putting some real rigor around who we would accept in our network and who we would sign as clients. And I think, you know, I know this is very similar for you, but what didn't work for me was saying yes and ex- to some clients who were in Africa and Europe, mm-hmm. um, which mm-hmm. meant my time zone, I don't know, you know, <laughs> some of the hours I was working, uh-huh. 
You was, were working yeah. insane hours yeah, too. I went 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours most days of the week. Mm. And I think probably two things here. A, being really rigorous about my time, mm-hmm. what I would accept as work time and, and personal time. And I think that came from not having, a, I guess, really rigorous boundaries about who we were going to work with. Mm. Mm. So possibly a two-part answer there, Sam. I think barriers on my time and barriers on who I was accepting into my network in order to potentially work within the first place. I think it's that time zone thing is really important to note because in Australia and New Zealand, like any any of us that are sort of down here at the the bottom of the earth, we need to pay attention to what those time zones are like because doing business with Europe, it doesn't really play very well. So if you were going to do business with North America and Europe, it means that your day is exceptionally long. I would suggest choosing one or the other. Or, you know, if you wanted to work 14 hour days, go for it. I'm not saying don't do that, but really good to note that that was something that you didn't enjoy doing. Yeah. And that's, look, that's something that I did do. I, I you know, I, I chose particularly West Coast US mm-hmm. which from here in Canberra is usually on a sort of five or six hour shift. So my morning, US afternoon, and that becomes quite easy to work with. But once you start adding Europe and, and Africa and, and the UK in, you know, we suddenly start to deal with another 10 hours the other way. Mm-hmm. And, and that, would, that meant for some very, very, very long days and very tiring days. And yes. I think in reflection, you know, I, I've always been a firm believer that the thing that we as the, the owner of the business bring to our business more than anything else is the clarity of our decision-making process. Mm. Right, the clarity of our thinking, the clarity of our direction and our leadership. If I look back on it, I was probably not necessarily making the best decisions for my business just because I was working so many hours and I was quite mentally fatigued as a result. Mm, good insight. What was it for you? I know when we were talking off here before, we kind of almost arrived at a similar mm-hmm. result, but was it the same for you? Yeah, so mine was definitely boundaries on my time, but not so much from a time zone issue. It was the way that I was blocking my time in my week. So I was recording podcast episodes almost every day. Again, a lot of the people I speak to are in North America, which means that I'm recording early in the morning because that's their afternoon. And sometimes because of the East Coast, with them being that three hours ahead of the West Coast as well, some of those mornings were very early. So recording early every single morning was making me, again, exactly what you said, it was very difficult to make those decisions on a, you know, on a split second. I found that I was starting to get a little bit sluggish, couldn't quite process my thoughts as fast as what I normally could. And, you know, maybe stretching my client facing time over too many days. Now I've sort of condensed everything. So now I only record my guest episodes two days a month total, not even not just every like one day a week. There's only two days total in a month. And now we're recording our episodes as well, Tim, on one day. So it's only three days total per month that I'm recording. And it means that I'm able to condense everything else in in the week as well. So it's working much better for me because, you know, I think it's really important. It's not just finding time to do our business activities. We must, must, must have time to ourselves. And if we don't have time to ourselves, it's not just about rest. It's about, you know, switching our brains off so that we can make decisions. It's about having time out for health and fitness. It's about, you know, just being able to take time out and doing nothing so that we're able to be more creative. And it's really important to do that. It's something that I've always talked about. It's not new, but something that had a bit of a creep into my calendar and it can happen very slowly. And then all of a sudden you're like, hang on a minute, how did I let it get to, you know, to this? So it's, it's getting back and getting it, getting a control, I guess, of my calendar again. Yeah, I know that's something that's really important to you and for many of our listeners is that we have structure. Mm-hmm. And, and I, you know, many of our listeners will know that when you plan out your year, it's very, very structured about mm-hmm. what happens. And if a little bit of, you know, disruption to that can actually throw, <laughs> uh, throw everything, start to throw everything out. 
Yes, uh, I, I do have a little bit of OCD around my around my calendar. Yes, Tim, I, hear, I heard what you were saying. <laughs> and look, I think for many people that can actually be self-inflicted and we're not necessarily aware of it as well. Right? Your business particularly went underwent, you know, some quite significant changes in its structure last year. Mm-hmm. And it was actually, you know, it's only on reflection that we actually start to go, oh, actually, I introduced that volatility. It wasn't Mm -hmm. an external factor introducing it. Mm -hmm. I introduced that volatility. And sometimes it may not seem like very much at start, Mm -hmm. but that starts to oscillate a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And all of a sudden, everything starts to seem out of control. Mm. And you've gone, my God, I'm just carrying too many things in my head. And it's all just that mental clutter. And you just lose that focus and that clarity about what your purpose is. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that I noticed was I was just unable to be at the level of creative that I normally am. And that's my favorite part of the business is being creative. So to lose that starts to put you in a real different headspace. So yeah, really important to to pay attention to to that. Okay. What about things that did work for you? What's what's one thing that you thought, you know, you weren't really, again, experimenting, Uh you reckon made a difference for you? So this one is not, uh, this one's something that until we were reflecting, I hadn't even thought of. So I'm going to talk about this, I think, a lot more moving forward, because until we were having this conversation, I hadn't even acknowledged it. And that's that this year, I shared more of who I authentically am. Now, I always share who I am for real, but what I did is brought in more of the things that I normally keep under wraps. So there's a big woo-woo side of me, or as some of my some of my friends in my mastermind say, oh no, it's just one woo, not two woos. I'm just woo. (laughs) Because I have a real good, good lot of strategy that goes with it. But I started sharing with my with my clients weekly energy forecasts. I talk about human design a lot more. I talk about the solar transits and I talk about it in relation to the energy that's happening, how our clients might be reacting, how the world's reacting, things that might be coming up up for you as a business owner. I never used to like sharing these things before, even though I've always believed in this. I'm very intuitive and, you know, I'm very spiritual, but because I am very strategic, I was scared to share it because I thought that people would have a different perception of who I was and that maybe that I might not be, you know, as, and I put it in air quotes, as business oriented as some people. But yeah. in actual fact, by me sharing that this is all of me, the people that are in my world now are like, wow, we get onto a weekly call. And the first question is, what's the energy forecast this week before we get into the strategy? Because my clients are starting to understand how the energy is affecting us as business owners and the people around us and how knowing this before we put our strategy together is super helpful. So this, I'm going to put this as a massive tick and a massive win for me. Yeah. You will have, uh, if you're listening to this podcast for a while, um, you will notice certainly that Sam talks a lot about What's the energy doing right now? Uh-huh. Even, even on our podcasts with someone as less woo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm one woo. You're a quarter woo or I'm less. A quarter woo. Maybe just an woo. <laughs> maybe you I was going to say maybe you're a woo. <laughs> <laughs> one or other. But, yeah, you, you will see that. And I think it's important. I, uh, you know, my experience with that and it's something that I do want to do a lot more of myself over the next 12 months as well. I was interviewed at a mastermind recently um, that I'm involved with, you know, quite some, some quite insightful questions about, you know, why I do what I do and, and some of my background and stuff like that. And it was interesting that a lot of people came up to me afterwards and, you know, I got like hugs and stuff like <laughs> just this, this is ability, this, you know, to connect on things other than what it is we do for clients. You really looked shocked then when you said you got hugs and stuff. Is this not a normal thing for you? You're no. not a, a hugger or it's not the... No, the... Apparently I'm quite intimidating in person. <laughs> well, you are quite tall. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like it was it was just this, I guess, this ability to connect. And I know and I've, I've been noticing it a lot more when I read other people's content or, or see them share videos you know, when, they, when they're sharing their business content, it's just like, well, oh, that's just more business content. But when they actually start to share more of their motivations and their kind of insights and their, you know, what's going on with them, it actually, 
I, I find I'm, I'm noticing myself being more resonant and more connected to them mm. as, as an individual and, and, you know, liking or in some cases disliking, um, you know, that person more. Mm. Now, that's really important. Well. I was going to say exactly that, that it's not just about attracting the right people. It's also about saying, well, this is what I stand for. And if it's not for you, that's great. I don't like the word repelling. I think that's quite a strong word, but it's about, you know, really drawing that line in the sand and, and it's either this is for you or it's not for you. That's right. Yeah, I like that. So what's the number one thing that has worked for you this year, Tim? Look, I'm going to say it was has been profit firsting my business. Profit firsting. Now, if you don't know of Profit First, it's a, it's a book written by Mike Michalowicz or Mike Motorbike. Mike <laughs> Motorbike? <laughs> yeah, he even says that himself. He's like, you can call me Mike Motorbike. <laughs> Michalowicz <laughs> might be too difficult to say. Um, so Profit First is a is a, a theory around that sort of debunks a little of the traditional accounting method, you know, that you know, revenue minus expenses equals profit, right? Um, well, in this case, profit is, you know, profit minus revenue <laughs> equals expenses. And so mathematically the formula still the still the formula still works, but it's a it's a basis that, that how you organize the revenue in your business into different buckets for different things, right? So mm-hmm. that you've got your OPEX, that you've got your revenue account, you've got your owner's compensation and, and you've got your profit. And the idea being that of the revenue you earn, you start paying yourself a profit first and putting it aside so that you don't get to the end of the year and your accountant goes and says, well, you know, you've made a $30,000 profit or a $50,000 profit. And you're like, where's the money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> where's the actual cash, Right. <laughs> And they're going to go, but it's here on paper, right? <laughs> this is the accounting profit. So it's a really interesting thing, and I, I, I think it's probably you know increasingly for me one of the the business books that I would recommend people get because I found that it's actually allowed me to pay myself more regularly, put money aside that I can say that is the profit my business is making, which is mm-hmm. what our business is ultimately for, but also put a cap on what I spend, what I spend. Because mm. for so many business owners and, and um, you know, this is certainly where I started. It was like I had a tax account and I had a, an, an OPEX account, right? The money came into the OPEX account and went out of the OPEX account. And every so often I'd go, Oop, need to top that up. I was just, Oops, I forgot to put my tax in the other account. <laughs> I forgot to put my tax in or, you know, hang on, I've got expense coming out tomorrow, so I won't put money in the tax. And you get to your GST period and you're like, ah, oh, crap, you know, I owe 8000 mm. 10000 20000 whatever it is on tax. Mm. And you're like, well, I'll just go and sign another client to do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because <laughs> the money's just not there you've actually gone and spent another thing so i really like the methodology around just getting some a little bit more clarity and control over what your business is actually doing right and look bank accounts are so easy to create these days you may as well go and create a bunch of them and say you know this is my gst account put money there this is my this is my account put money there and then what's left over you run out of your OPEX account, right? So that's mm. the bit you get to spend on operating your business. Absolutely. I interviewed Deborah Whitby back in episode 64 and she talked about it. So I'll pop the link in the show notes if you want to go back. She did a really good deep dive in how to set that all up. If reading isn't for you and you don't want to pick up the Profit First book, then that episode is a really great overview of how to implement Profit First in your business. I think that's just for me it's just... I feel more in control. (laughs) And that's always a good thing because here's the thing. When you're in control, you have more confidence. When you have more confidence, you're able to make decisions, better decisions or faster decisions. And the way that you make decisions is different. You don't, you know, you don't question yourself as much. So I think that that having control probably affects more than just the money, I'm going to suggest that it probably has made a lot of difference in other areas, which puts money into your accounts. Absolutely. I think it's now I have less volatility Mm. than before. You know, Mm -hmm. we all know, and we've probably all been there where we find ourselves short of, you know, short of a big bill to come up and all of a sudden mm-hmm. you go and chase a bunch of clients and then you go, got the money there and then you go and I Yeah, few, but then just find yourself in the same cycle again. And then I can relax a little bit and then you just find yourself in the same cycle um, a bit later on. And so many of us, you know, 
constantly as a result end up chasing our tail which you and I would absolutely agree that is not the purpose of your business no it's not but we've all been there at one point or another it's about not getting back there again <laughs> absolutely yeah. what's one nice. thing what's one thing, one thing that's worked for you when you said sharing more of you but what's mm-hmm. something? this this second one is definitely the thing that's made the biggest difference in my business in a long time and it's something that I'm being interviewed about a lot recently. And that is making the decision last year, exactly a year ago, June 2020, to, and I did it, started it just as a trial, but a trial allowing my clients to have access to my implementation team. How big was your team <laughs> originally? <laughs> so right. we had a team. Let's of- go back to January 2020. How big was your team at that point? Okay, so January 2020 was two because it was just not including yourself just two I remember in February we were on the road and I remember hiring who most of my clients and you would know Ethany my amazing amazing team lead thank you I was like what is she she's just amazing (laughs) she's my project manager Um, and my brain she almost is my brain we hired her in February so there was just the four of us who was who was on team before then what were their roles we had an uh, audio editor yeah. as a freelancer mm-hmm. and one project manager who was full-time. Okay. That right. was so it. Really you, project manager, and, and part-time. Yep. And then Ethany comes on board. Ethany came on board. And then the way that we started to grow this team, and this is really important because you don't go from zero to hero overnight, right? Yeah. We started bringing team on freelancer capacity, and as part-timers, that's how we started going because I, I wasn't confident enough to bring people on full-time and I also didn't want to be letting go of people really quickly because remembering that this was an experiment for us. Mm. Um, so we brought on part-time a designer and we brought on part-time a content writer and then within a month that had turned into two content writers, two designers, yeah, anyway, we've got 14 now, people in web, people in active campaign, and we still have freelancers, still have freelancers doing um, different bits and pieces. But that happened over, you know, those first probably four, four to five months, they started coming on. So bringing on implementation for my clients was the best thing I ever did because what I realized was the biggest sticking point for them was implementing what I was teaching. So rather than try and drag them along harder, it was like, how can I make it easier for them? Mm. And this was the answer. I already had the systems in place to run my team. I already knew how to train them. I didn't have to train my clients to train their team to implement what I was teaching. Now it was the training was in place. The systems were in place. Let's just roll this out and scale it. And that's what we've done. Yeah. I had a really brilliant question there. Now I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back to you. It'll it come, come back, back to you. It, it was the, those first few months and, and even still, you know, in our team meetings a bit, you know, we still talk a lot about, all right, well, what didn't, didn't work this month? What didn't work? But those first three months, was I was <laughs> seriously living life by the seat of my pants creating the systems to get that up and running was huge and there was a few nights where I cried myself to sleep and wondered what I was doing and had I lost my mind because no, no one likes to let people down right yeah not just your customers but your staff as well it's every, yeah that's right there's so many people now that that are you know are relying on you on both sides of the fence so and and I still do have some sometimes like that but it's the it's the best thing that it's the best thing I've ever done in mm. my coaching business it's yeah. um it's been fantastic I for for us and for our clients and for our team yeah I must admit that and this is what I was going to say earlier the number of conversations I have with other coaches who have gone my clients just don't implement my clients don't implement I've got some really fantastic ideas but my clients don't implement right Comes back to this one thing, right? Success comes from <laughs> constant and repeated action. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter which direction it is in. <laughs> yep. So, so here's the thing: you might have clients that aren't in a financial position to hire, 
So we're, we've given our clients all these different team members for less than it would cost them to hire one just in one of those areas. So it helps that. But number two, if they're super busy, which as you know, we're trying to help our clients become, uh, you know, get more clients. So essentially they're more busy. How can we get them to implement as well? It doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> so it just, yeah, I, I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner, but we got there. So that's definitely the biggest win in our year is, is creating implementation team for our I clients. think this is, this is something that, you know, as coaches and consultants, that we need to think about. We, we're good at our area of expertise, but our client success ultimately comes from their ability to implement. And so maybe this is something that you can learn from what Sam's done and going, maybe I should be looking at how I implement for my team and maybe not be quite so afraid of the done for you service. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Albeit that does come with some challenges, but you know, providing some more uh, implementation for your, for your clients might be something that in, the remainder of 2021 and into 2022 that you know, ultimately we can go, how do I help my clients succeed with the tools I'm giving them? Mm. And in a completely different way of looking at that, if you're in a position now where you want to grow your business and you're unable to hire all of these people, then come see me because we can help you to implement what needs to happen so that you can grow your business so that you can do this for your clients down the track. Yeah, absolutely. Ironically, that's almost identical to the other thing that worked for me last year. We're, our wins are almost, and our, our not-so-wins are almost mirrored. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So I, I entered 2021 with one part-time VA who I had employed to help with the number of conversations that I was having. Right? And I was getting to the point where I was finding I was spending sort of four hours a day just, you know, on text, uh, mm-hmm. chatting with people on, on Facebook or on, or on LinkedIn and having, and having conversations. And I looked at what conversations were working and what wasn't working and started to systemize a lot of those conversations and training up my VA, Serena, to manage those for me. And I swear she has better conversations than I do. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I think late last year, probably around July, August, I thought, okay, well, you know, if I want to grow this business, what's the next thing that I have to do, right? You know, where is the area of my business that's taking up a lot of my time that I'm probably can do, but I'm doing just because I can do it. Mm. Uh, And I brought on three full-time staff in the space of like, six weeks, mm-hmm. which I'm like, probably like you, but Sam absolutely terrified me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my it's God. It's scary. It is it scary. Is, right? Because, you know, I, I didn't necessarily, I mean, I had the revenue to pay for it, but you know, it, the revenue wasn't expanding straight. It <laughs> doesn't expand straight away. That's exactly right. It's got to come from somewhere and it was coming out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. Right? It was coming out of my owner's compensation bucket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought, okay, well, look, if I want to do more, okay, yes, I can now free some time up. But, you know, if I reflect on it now, like I had maybe 50 or 60 hours a week that I was doing previously. And now for very little extra expense, proportionately, I've now got, you know, 160, 200 hours a week worth of effort time that I can put into my business. And I think that's made a massive difference mm. to the stuff that I do. Mm. Just even just some of the, you know, again, the time consuming, tedious, the five and $10 tasks, I can say, you go and do that now. Mm-hmm. And that's made, you know, that's made a pretty significant difference. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And absolutely. as much as it scared me now, I don't think that's something that I would ever consider taking back if I had my magic time machine. Mm. Absolutely. So, <laughs> We've shared some of these things with you today so you can not just hear what has worked and hasn't worked for us, but so that it can get you thinking, is this, you know, what has this inspired in your mind, how you can change your business, what you can experiment with, or maybe what's not working in your business right now. What is the one thing that you want to leave or what's the one thought that you want to finish this episode with, Tim? Look, I think if if there's any thought that we we should take away from this is that 
it's probably don't be afraid to take action on something Mm. because the sooner we make a decision and take action on it, the sooner we can discover whether it works or doesn't work or needs to be tweaked and realigned, right, based on our experience. If we don't make these decisions and we don't try stuff in our business and take risks, right, that we'll we'll never grow, we'll never move, we'll always stay where we are and probably just eventually, you know, dwindle away and diminish. Mm. Yeah, for me, it's definitely the same. If I had have implemented both of these things that I talked about today, five years ago, I wouldn't have had to think about them for the last five years thinking, oh, you know, is this something that we could do? I'm a bit afraid of this. At least if you implement, you can decide straight away, did it work or not? So instead of it being living rent free in your head, it's either going to work or it's not, and you can move on and make different decisions. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So if you've got value from today's episode, I'd love you to think who else is there in your world that would get some value out of what we've talked about today. If you're on your phone, scroll up to the top, hit that share button and share with just one other person in your world uh, so that they can get value from this too. Tim, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you for listening. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Ciao, ciao. Today's episode may be over, but let's continue the conversation. Head on over to the Thought Leaders Business Lab community on Facebook and connect with other entrepreneurs who are building and scaling their business too. See you next time in the Thought Leaders Business Lab.